I mean, I really am grateful that Sunday after Sunday, you come to church. Especially when there are so many other things that could take your attention. Even in these hot days, here you are. But why do we do this? Why do we keep coming here? I mean, is it important? Yes, obviously. That's what I want to talk about today. Why do we keep coming here? St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, says that creation itself is broken and is longing for redemption and that God has subjected it to futility so that it may be redeemed. That is, that God's plan was interrupted by sin. But God did not give up. Because God is love. And so God began to then intervene into human history and ultimately in the fullness of time with the Lord Jesus Christ to reorder humanity and creation itself. To reorder it after the pattern of the original creation and the image of heaven. What we do on Sunday is to enter into the reordering work of God. And that we as men and women, the descendants of Adam and Eve, who had the power to ruin creation, now through Christ Jesus, we, the descendants of Adam and Eve, have the power through grace to reorder creation. But that power comes not from us, it comes from Christ specifically Christ in the Eucharist. This book that I'm holding is the documents of the Second Vatican Council. That was a big deal in the church. And I want to read from you very briefly what the church of the council said about coming here on Sunday. Would you like to hear it? It won't be much. Little. The Council on the Liturgy, the document says, It is of the essence of the Church that she be both human and divine. That the Church be both human and divine. When we look at Christ himself, he was human and divine. He was the perfect marriage of humanity and divinity. The marriage of humanity and divinity. We speak about the church as the bride of Christ. Thus, the church is the perfect marriage of humanity and divinity. It says, the church then, both human and divine, is visible and yet invisibly equipped. So the church is this place of paradox. There is things that are visible and invisible. The church is eager to act eager to act in the world. Think of all of the ministry that needs to be done in the world. It's beautiful. The church is eager to act, yet intent on contemplation. That we are people who act, but we are intent on contemplation. It seems like a paradox, doesn't it? Just like human and divine. But the church says all these things in such The church, in her, the human, is directed and subordinate to the divine. The human is directed and subordinate to the divine. Here's St. Paul's words. Creation has been subjected, in a sense, to the human. The reordering is that we now, as humans, must be once again subjected and subordinate to God. I know this makes sense, and it should be obvious, but it's good to be reminded Adam and Eve said, no God, we'll be God, thank you very much. And something fundamentally was broken. And so the reordering is, we must be subordinate now to God. Got that? Just as the church is fundamentally subordinate to Christ, but yet they are one. You with me here? The document goes on to say, rightly then, the liturgy is an exercise of the priestly office of Jesus Christ. 
The liturgy is the priestly, the exercise of the priestly office of Jesus Christ. In other words, what we do on Sunday is we encounter Jesus Christ working. It's Jesus's liturgy. It belongs to him. It's his. It's Christ's. Christ is the one who wants to now reorder us all. And the place in which Christ reorders us primarily is right here. That the liturgy is that place. Think of it this way. When somebody has cancer or disease, there must be some medicine brought into that person. And that medicine gets injected in and it reorders and structures that person. I think of like chemotherapy. It might even cause great suffering, but that suffering produces healing. That Jesus is our remedy. And he's going to be injected in us, so to speak, if I can use that language. We receive Christ into us, and he reworks us. And the liturgy is, in a sense, the doctor's office of Jesus Christ, where we become reordered after the pattern of the original creation in heaven. Therefore, if it's Jesus' liturgy, then the church is subordinate to Christ. But yet Christ speaks through the church. What do I say? What am I saying here? Liturgy is a place where we submit ourselves to Christ and the church. And we become reordered Sunday after Sunday. We let the liturgy of the church reorder us. It works on us. There are some things in Mass that I frankly don't like. But it's not about me. It's about Christ wanting to work in me. There are some things about going to the doctor that I really don't like. But I allow the doctor to do that because I trust in faith that the doctor has my greatest interest in mind and my health, and I allow the doctor to do these things which I don't like but bring about a greater good. And so there might be things I don't like about the church or about the liturgy, but I allow the church to work in me and thus through me transform me so that I can therefore go into the world and redeem creation. Isn't that a beautiful vision? I say all this just as a reminder of what we do when we're here on Sunday. Is we allow the liturgy to reorder us. And it's Christ's liturgy. And so we become obedient to Christ and what Christ is asking us to do. What can happen liturgically, though, is there can be a temptation to want to claim it for ourselves. We can't do that. We simply participate and do what the church asks us to do. And that's hard work. But it's okay. okay. I think worship is, should be hard sometimes. Right? Sometimes it's okay that worship is hard. You who are married, sometimes it's hard to love your spouse and it's hard to raise your kids. Sometimes it's easy. But there are two temptations that I want to talk about briefly that can happen with liturgy. And I think about it in the context of a wedding. There can be a temptation to put too much emphasis on the liturgy and too little emphasis. Here's what I mean. Think of a wedding. I do lots of weddings in the summer. It's great. Did you know that St. Augustine's in the last 18 months has prepared over 45 couples for marriage? (laughs) I go to a lot of weddings. So do the guidelines. Lots of weddings. We have a newly married couple right there. Congratulations. All right. Think of a wedding. A wedding is a big day, isn't it? The dress, the flowers, the music, all of that. Oh, all of that. I could say a wedding is simply this. A bride and a groom saying to each other, I love you and I'll love you forever. That's all it is. And I think don't don't fiancés Don't they say, I love you and love you forever lots of times? Haven't they said that before the wedding? They probably said that to each other many times. So what's the point of even having the wedding? Why go to all the bother of the white dress and the flowers and the music and the reception? Why even do that? Because it's important. Because when that couple comes here before God and says those words, it's different than every other time they've said it. 
that when they say it in this context, those words mean something different and something changes about them. God's word goes out and it changes things. That when they say those vows, their relationship fundamentally changes with each other and it changes with their families. That's why they leave their families and join together. And so we do all of these things, the liturgy, to emphasize that something important just took place in this liturgy. This liturgy restructured that couple's lives. Now, could there be an overemphasis on the dress and the flowers and the music? Say yes to the dress, whatever, right? Could it be, could you go a little overboard? And where the focus becomes the dress and the flowers and the music and the reception and the liturgy itself becomes lost? Is that possible? It is. Is that good? No. So God, you keep it in balance. Or could we go the other way? Ah, heck with it all. Let's just come in our, in our shorts and flip-flops and let's just say I love you, I love you too, and we're done and go home. Well, we don't want to do that either. So the, where's the balance? The church gives it. The church says, here. It's Christ's liturgy, and Christ speaks to the church. The church says, do it this way. The church sets the parameter so that we don't become pharisaical, where it all becomes about the intricacies of the details, or we don't go the other way, right? That's what we do every Sunday. We gather here so that Jesus may continue his work of redemption in us, that in this liturgical service, we become reordered. That the liturgy itself begins to refocus us. And just think about it. Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, some of you day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, continue to come here and how it can change our lives. And so that we leave this place different and then we really do something out there. It's not meant to stay in here. We become reordered in order to go out there and really do something. But these documents said, the reason why we go out there is because of what happens here. It starts here and then goes out there. That thus, the theme of marriage Humanity and divinity in Christ Jesus, Christ and his church, contemplation and action, marriage, marriage, in the end is the theme from the beginning to the end of the Bible. When we find ourselves leaning too much to one side or the other, stop. It's a marriage. And if you're not sure where to stand, the church does. The church does. So it's great to have you all here. Thank you for coming to liturgy. And let us continue to pray for each other. And I hope to see you every Sunday for the rest of your lives.